finding my unique writer's voice. First of all, what does that even mean? What is a writer's voice? And second, how long has it taken me to get there? Or am I still getting there? I'm going to be answering both of these questions in this episode, and I hope you enjoy it. Welcome back to another episode. I am very happy that you've decided to join me once again on my writing journey. Uh, thank you for subscribing. If you haven't already, please do so. Uh, thank you for liking this video. Any way that you've gotten involved and just supported my channel greatly helps. Um, I'm a epic fantasy writer and I'm just trying to put myself out there and share my writing process, my writing thoughts until my first book comes out, which is coming up in another few months. So stick around and that'll be available. So what is a unique writer's voice? What does that mean? For me, I'm sure there's a bunch of fancy definitions in a way you could dissect it, but for me, it's just the style of my writing, the style, the style that someone's right that writes. And it should be somewhat recognizable for that person. So if you read a Brandon Sanderson book, it sticks out to you as very Sanderson-esque. <laughs> you can, after you've re read a couple of his books, it kind of stands out to you um, and you kind of know what you're reading and know what to expect with scene beats, uh, character builds, uh, just a lot of different things that you can expect from an author. Um, same thing for if you read Token. Now, granted, he did write uh, quite a long time ago, so just the natural way of writing was a little bit different then as well. But just the way someone tells a story is their their writer's voice and it'll be the same thing for me when you pick up an uh, a <laughs> alex jagir's book um once you get reading a few you kind of know what to i wouldn't necessarily say expect because i want to keep people guessing with my books on what's going to happen but you kind of know that familiarity of how i'm going to be telling a story or how i build up characters and um and things of that not just not just what the story contains, but how I tell it um, through different scene selection, through uh, different ways that I build up characters and uh, so on and so forth. So that's kind of what I look at for what is writer's voice. It's just simply how I write and it should be recognizable to you once you get familiar with an author. So now I want to take a look at how my writer's voice has changed over time. It's going to be a somewhat long journey going way back. <laughs> so, uh, um, but stick around. I think it'll be interesting. So the, the very kind of first reference, I guess I'll think of is when I was writing, when I thought about it being serious at first, when I was really wanting to be a writer and it was kind of my dream. So when I was, you know, between 10 and 12 years old, and at that point, um, <laughs> my writer's voice was other authors, writer's voices. So a lot of time was not word for word, but essentially copying down, um, regurgitating what I had read from other authors. And that's a very normal process. I think for practically any type of, I guess you call writing art. So any type of art or creativity is just copying others. Um, so in my younger <laughs> writing years, it was mostly just taking up stories, even like kind of copying ideas of stories, um, different like action scenes and so on and so forth. It was a lot of copying, but it's very important for developing and just writing itself. So um, very important at that age. And then when I became a teenager, I, I'm sure that there was still a lot of um, kind of copying ideas into my mind, following in the steps of other writers. But at that point, I knew that I wanted to kind of write differently. So it was less referencing, say, books and stories and trying to think about how this author did it and more so, oh, I think it'd be fun to tell my story this way. So teenage years, um, including up into like through college, um, there was a lot of, that was a big transition time from discovering just kind of how I like to write scenes, how I like to write characters and dialogue. And it was still very much a learning process too. It's not like I suddenly found my writer's voice and I knew exactly how I want to be able to set up these characters and these epic scenes and storylines, but it's kind of a transition period into it. Interestingly, as a, <laughs> I'm kind of defining these terms as I go, but young adults. Um, so just out of college, a um, little bit into the twenties, uh, I would say mostly into the mid twenties or so. Um, I, I would say that at this point, it was a lot of studying um, 
authors not necessarily to exactly adopt how they write not like when I was a kid but recognizing what makes good writing kind of took that journey from and I'm sure there's things I recognized as a teen as well but just with the developed mind with reading a lot more and just getting older uh, I kind of took the step from reading books for a hundred percent pleasure and just you know wait going on for the ride versus reading them and just noticing things that made a really great scene or like a line of dialogue or something that really kind of pieced together who a character was so just recognizing what good writing was and trying to apply that to my own writing i think this was very good it's definitely not a copying i didn't read something and say oh i can use that exact thing into like this scene in my book but it was more or less a recognition of what makes good writing so i kind of had a blend here of um, whereas in my teenage and college years, I just kind of wrote and wrote, and I think it was a little bit directionless. When, uh, when I was in my twenties reading books, I wanted to purposely take from them ideas and patterns and things that I saw that was very beneficial uh, for my writing. It really hasn't been until the last few years. I'm 31 now. Um, hasn't been until like the late twenties, last two, three, maybe four years tops that. I, I've really settled into knowing how I want to write my books. Now, a uh, disclaimer, that doesn't mean that I have found my writer's voice, that um, everything is perfected and then I know exactly how I want everything to go. It's definitely going to be a development. And I would say that's the same for any writer. Um, but I still have um, things that I want to try out, things that I want to keep working at to get better with. And um, yeah, and and setting things up the way I want to. But the way that I want to tell the story, just the way that I write, I can already tell that I have an, my own way of writing. There are things I need to fix. Um, there are obviously maybe some bad habits, maybe um, using words um, over and over. Um, maybe I have a d sentence structures that might repeat often. So there's definitely things, and that comes through in the editing process, but there's definitely things that I realize that I can improve on. But I have my ideas of how I want to structure my books, how I want to tell the stories, develop the characters, and I'm really excited about it. So yeah, that's um, kind of an overview on finding my writer's voice. How long has it taken? Well, gee, 20 years or so, and I'm still finding it. I think that's just a process that's going to be ongoing. But my goal is to have you be able to pick up an Alex DeGear book and say, oh yeah, this is a Alex DeGear book. This is definitely what I'm looking for. I hope it's what you're looking for. I'd hate for you to pick it up and say, no, I don't want to read this rubbish. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, interesting journey. Um, and yeah, it's still progressing. And I want to be a better writer each and every year. Every time I come and set to the table to write, I want to be better than I was the day before. Thank you for watching. Appreciate your support very much so. Uh, subscribe and like if you haven't. And I'll see you next time.